certain currency called the <laughs> rand because of a geopolitical event that took place <laughs> in this part of the country and it seems that it's Okay, something, <laughs> something very strange has happened, yes. uh, but there is an explanation. Okay. The RAND has turned around after plunging yesterday in response to Finance Minister Pravin Gordon's legal woes. The currency started off falling further this morning, but then it changed course and jumped up by 2% against the dollar this afternoon. This came after the head of the National Prosecuting Authority, Sean Abraham, said that Gordon could submit for a review of the decision to prosecute. Gordon has, of course, been charged with fraud. He was issued with a formal summons yesterday to appear in court next month. But Abraham said today that he was more than willing to review any matter if somebody applied for him to do so, including Gordon. Well, the Rand weakened to one month low of 14 Rand 50 or so earlier. Then it strengthened uh, in that dramatic turnaround to around 14 Rand to the dollar before moderating again. Gordon is respected by financial markets and has previously suggested that he was being targeted for political reasons. The announcement of the formal summons yesterday exacerbated concerns about institutions and political risk in South Africa. Investors and rating agencies also back Gordon's plans to rein in government debt. He is scheduled to release the mini-budget this month that lays out spending plans for the next five years. Today, Treasury said it would struggle to deal with the shortfall or budget deficit due to low economic growth and revenue new shortfalls. In a written response to Parliament, Gordon also said he was concerned about the leadership at the South African Revenue Service after it failed to suspend a senior official for suspicious cash transactions. Well, uh, let's discuss. We're joined uh, for an international perspective by Peter Montalto from Nomura. He's on the line from London. Peter, thank you for joining us. Are you surprised at uh, the U-turn the RAND did this afternoon? Hi, good evening. Well, I think the volatility we've been seeing has been quite dramatic, and I think uh, markets are really struggling to get to grips with the South African political story here. But what we have to remember, I think, is the sort of carry or return loving environment globally that we are currently in, which means that investors do jump on any positive headline around South Africa, given the yield uh, that uh, South Africa has of uh, nine odd percent, just like nine percent uh, for ten-year bonds, and that creates this sort of whipping around that we're seeing. On, on this kind of headline. So presumably it's still vulnerable and it could weaken again. Uh, it just depends what any official says at any time. Exactly. So I think the real concern here is the sort of unpredictability of the headline risk. Like we can map out broadly some of the risk of end, whether it's a public pre protector report um, due on Friday, some uh, potential interdicts even that might happen around that uh, whole issue, the medium-term budget at the end of the month. But it's these random headlines coming out, whether it's questions in Parliament or uh, the press conference uh, suddenly held yesterday from the MPA, um, which are, are really going to drive things. So I think we're definitely going to see more weakness to come. But it's going to be incredibly choppy uh, around for, for the round. If, if you were asked by uh, potential investors in South Africa, would you deem this a political uh, prosecution? Uh, that's what Gordon himself has said, which raises huge concerns about the leadership in South Africa. Well, those sorts of questions are always very difficult because obviously we can never know for certain what the drivers that are going on are. But, you know, coming to Africa regularly, talking to many of the sort of players uh, in this whole saga, I think we can come away with the quite strong likelihood that there is sort of political factional war going on that is uh, moving the narrative and the headline risk around South Africa for investors at the moment. So I think the, the simple answer to your question is, uh, is probably yes. Our courts are strong, though. So if this goes to court, um, uh, the possibility is that it'll be exposed if it's a, a flimsy charge. Is that not a, a positive thing, therefore? Well, this has really been a debate that I've been having with investors yesterday and today, and I think the, that argument kind of misses the point. Ultimately, what this is about isn't uh, logistics um, or the sort of uh, law process itself. It's about constructing internal political narratives within the ANC and around the succession battle that is going on. And I think uh, ultimately this probably never comes to trial, and the spy unit issue probably never comes to trial. Uh, you know, even if Praveen Gordon appears in court on the 2nd of November, any trial might only happen even in Q2 of next year. So ultimately, I think it's around political narratives in the short term, uh, not any ultimate success uh, or indeed failure, as you laid out, uh, of any court case.
Peter, as long as uh, Gordon doesn't resign and isn't removed, uh, will the market accept he still has the clout uh, to do what he said he would do, reign in debt? We've got the mini budget uh, coming up at a time when students are, are putting uh, pressure on for, for low fees, no fees. Uh, is he seen uh, still to be trusted in the position that he's in? Well, that's been the interesting sort of feedback and question from investors, particularly in New York and other investors that were in Washington, the IMF meetings with the South African delegation uh, in the past week. And I think people still trust very much that fiscal policy is roughly contained and is, in, is on track. They're really, uh, the key question, the bigger question is around structural reforms and the ability to boost potential growth that is so important for the ratings narrative uh, moving forward. And I think that's where there's a lot more skepticism uh, from investors uh, after after the interactions of the last week uh, that Treasury can deliver on. The Treasury has all the right ideas, of course. Green Gordon has been pushing all the right ideas on structural reform, but they really require you know, top-level um, political capital for a successful uh, deployment. I think that's, that's what's really lacking here. All right, finally then, what's, what's your sense? Uh, how do you think this could play out for the South African economy, especially uh, because we're looking at those uh, ratings reviews towards the end of the year? So I think the broad message on the sort of macro outlook is still very much uh, feels like recession. We're going to see uh, negative per capita income growth uh, for the next two, three years. We're going to see uh, the jobs uh, situation not particularly going anywhere, bumbling along in the coming uh, few years and failing, for instance, to absorb graduates coming into the market uh, in Q1 of next year. Um, so it's still going to be a feels like recession, but um, that's really a very unsatisfactory outcome from a developmental perspective for South Africa. And in terms of the rating, I think even ignoring the politics for a, for a moment, uh, the sort of lack of medium-run growth is going to be ratings negative, and we do expect downgrades, particularly from S&P, uh, on the 2nd of December. When you add the politics on top, I think it increases the probability uh, of those downgrades. And if the ultimate, and what we, of course, don't want to happen, but if uh, Praveen Gordon uh, is removed, I think that would make ratings downgrades a, a certainty, and probably before those year-end dates. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we leave it on that depressing note. Peter Tardman. Talto uh, from Nomura live for us from London.